This podcast is being sponsored by the Rise Up Project. Trust the process. Pain is power. All great things take time. I am unbreakable. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Unbreakables podcast, episode seven. I am your host, Jay. Today, I get the privilege of interviewing the founder, CEO, Mogul Insider <laughs> podcast and media agency. Yeah. So thank you again, Adam. I really, thank really you, appreciate you. you being here. I appreciate it. I told you I was going to drill you. Yeah, dude, yeah, bring it. <laughs> bring it. <laughs> no, but honestly, I'm really excited. I know we've connected via Instagram. Yep. And it was just a matter of time that I get you on. Yep, and yep. I feel like we... We kind of started from the same background in this in the space of this kind of just becoming a passion project, right? Sure. And building and branding your own media company. Mm-hmm, but before mm-hmm. we get to where you, where you are today, let's kind of go back just a little bit and what led you to success. But I really want to dive into a little bit of your childhood yeah. and your hardships, your failures, your breakthroughs. Wow. Uh, we're gonna go a little deep. We are where, called the Unbreakables. Man. Hey, I'm I'm with it. Let's do it. Where Where do you want to start? So let's take me back to let's say how was how was your childhood? Did you have a rough upbringing? Was um, it pretty easy sailing? Shout out to my parents. I think they were definitely a huge like just they're they're I, I looked up to them a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, every family goes through certain things that we you know that at the end of the day it just kind of happens. Mm-hmm. But I think overall I had a really great upbringing. I don't necessarily I'm not that kid that. And I, I don't know, I, I sometimes tell people that it's kind of, it, it kind of also was a bad thing. It was kind mm-hmm. of a curse at the same time. Like, I was never that kid that really needed any resources or anything. I wasn't yeah. that kid that really needed money or had to or didn't have it. Or, thankfully, I'm very, very thankful my dad did a really good job of never, ever, ever making us feel like we mm-hmm. didn't have anything mm-hmm. we needed or wanted, you know. Um, and then my mom, oh, man, my mom, like, she, I mean... I, I, lo- I love that woman to death. You know, I may not show it to her. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's just like one big thing I struggle in my life is just, you know, showing emotions and things <laughs> like that. But um, I definitely appreciate everything she's done. She she took me out of school at third grade and I was homeschooled all the oh, way till wow. college. How was that experience? That <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it I, definitely I, is an experience, I, right? Guys, it's so funny because I'm 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 kind of the kid that if you look back, you're like, oh, this kid's not. The people always thought like I was like I guess smart or unique mm-hmm. or different, but I was. I googled every single thing. I literally Google was my best friend for like 15, 20 years. It was. I loved it. I mean, like, especially homeschooled, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I would wake up. Like, obviously, like, my mom had a routine. She mm-hmm. tried her best to create a routine, but I always tried to break the rules. I was never about following mm-hmm. anything or anything. Mm-hmm. I was such a troublemaker. Mm-hmm. Um, Brothers, sisters? Sister. She's younger than me. Uh, you know, a couple years younger than me. So she she came around a little later. But, um, yeah, so my mom took me out from third grade all the way to college and just homeschooled. So she, like, she sacrificed a lot. So wow. in terms of childhood, I really think i had was i was blessed overall mm-hmm. did i go through things absolutely you know just like i i tell this to people a lot because a lot of people who look at people who start mm-hmm. something and they have money or they're or they're wealthy or and i'm not saying my family was that i'm just saying like a lot of people say like oh you had the resources and in my opinion it's like if no matter what even if you had the resources or you didn't if you built something it's still to me mm-hmm. I, I respect it mm-hmm. and so but yeah, that's kind of to answer your question. Like, but even then, like to your point, there are many people that are blessed, that yeah. are fortunate, that have the money, the resources, yeah. but they don't even do do anything with it. You well, know what I mean? I mean, here, I'll, I'll tell you something. So I don't want people to think like I had the money and the resources. Mm-hmm. I was living comfortable, right? But in terms of really going out there and starting something and trying to do something, the resources, the people that I know, all that kind of stuff, it all started from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom's side of the family is very business oriented. My dad's more engineering. Mm. So uh, my dad's a tech guy. He's very into IT and all of these other kind of nerdy, geeky mm-hmm. things. And mm-hmm. by the way, like, you know, shout out to Pops, because if he's <laughs> listening to this, he's very freaking smart at what he does. 
like super super smart i mean i look i look up to that guy in terms of like brain knowledge mm -hmm. like he is able to remember things that i'm like i don't know how you even do that like so he's definitely a brainiac but in terms of business kind of lacks that you know just right, like most right. tech guys they they're very into their craft all they want to do is is code and mm -hmm. and make their software or whatever it is they're working on but they're not necessarily about really putting themselves out there relationships more introvert exactly right, mm -hmm. right? and my mom though had the opposite so I think growing up, what was really interesting is like now that I'm talking about it publicly, because it's really cool because I'm kind of like everything that's yeah. in here. I'm like speaking <laughs> it now, you know, um, she was more the extrovert. She was more the uh, always trying new projects, always mm -hmm. the business person, always trying to do certain things out there. So I think I I took from both of them, you know. And a very interesting mix happened. But uh, when I started, it was I didn't I didn't know anyone. I didn't have anything. I didn't necessarily. I wasn't given like a like a, a small playbook. loan of a million dollars <laughs> like that that didn't end up a playbook exactly yeah. like i had no idea where to start so how was the adjustment because you said from third grade to college yeah you were homeschooled yeah how was that adjustment i mean i could imagine i'm a very social person by nature yeah. i just my friends are my family so how was it for you transitioning to college being around people <laughs> i fun. mean you're a podcast host now like i know i know i know how, how, yeah. how was that? I love people. People growing up to me was the most interesting thing. I'm actually, I think I'm kind of a psychopath when it comes to people. And I, let me tell you why. I naturally, as a kid, used to study every single goddamn move I saw when it comes to anyone. I would purposely try things in real life to see how people reacted. So if in my head, I'm thinking to myself, how can I convince, for example, like this is really, I'm dead yeah. ass. I've thought this. How can I convince, for example, the person behind the camera over here, this lovely lady to Jiminy. do, to shout do, out Jiminy. shout out Jiminy. I have to do, to do, to like, to be a part of the team or mm -hmm. to do something like if i want to open a podcast mm -hmm. so i was like hmm, how can i convince people naturally to do things that to feel like they're getting the most out of the value that's just like a simple example yeah, on yeah, how i use it yeah. in business right but i would do it on a much smaller version like let's say i wanted to i don't know get uh, go eat somewhere how can i convince my mom to tell me to say okay mm. uh my mom actually <laughs> one big thing she always jokes she's like adam you're such a big manipulator um <laughs> Which, it's a gift and a curse, right? It's a gift and a curse, <laughs> yes. Because if you use it for the wrong, it's oh my god, you're of so of course it, you, you, it's it's so bad because you get what you want, but you're doing it in such unethical ways. And thankfully, I was always taught to never ever do that. Mm -hmm. As a kid, obviously, when you're like you're gonna 13, trial and error, 14, 12, 11, 10, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, let me see if I can get away with things, you know. <laughs> and so I always figured out a ways to get out of you know trouble, figure out ways to get out of things, and always figured out ways how to like develop friendships. Like, how can I hang with the cool guys? How can I? How can I at the same time be be like also very you know impactful in terms of when I speak, people People still respect me how can mm -hmm. i why did that person look at me like this when i said this why did that person do that when that happened if i see a couple fighting why are they fighting what's actually happening that's naturally as a kid i was so curious to find out curious, i just observant and aware mm -hmm. i just wanted to know mm -hmm. like like for example if i see a guy walking outside of a door or watching outside of a building why does he take a left instead of a right mm -hmm. what the heck was he thinking mm -hmm. that like i actually care about knowing that <laughs> I swear to but God. That's good though. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it works out for you, especially what you're doing now. So now, right? what I see it doing now is the ability to just understand human psychology so well, so to a point that <coughs> when I got into business, um, my the i guess what you call the growth mm -hmm. spurt mm -hmm. was a lot faster in my mm -hmm. opinion than most people that mm -hmm. i see because i started to recognize certain things mm -hmm. like just to throw it out there, biggest tip I tell anyone in college or anything like that right now is two things, build the network and provide value mm -hmm. to the right people, period. Because that will, the two concepts, I was actually just telling Hisham on the way here, the two concepts to business and my, the, what I've seen so far mm -hmm. is who you know and who knows you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I agree so. with you, absolutely. So what would you say, okay, putting yourself out there, right, mm -hmm. for college and stuff, what, going back to those tips, what were ways that you put yourself out there? How, how did you reach out to these people or build those relationships? Like some people don't know what to do. Yeah. Some people think, especially social media, let's let's speak sp social media, right? Sure. They think that you have to, there's a misconception that you have to have a strong following before <sighs> you reach out to this person. No. 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 So what, what, what advice can you give someone that wants to build a bigger network, build sure. those relationships, collaborations, partnerships? Yep but doesn't know what to do. I think first, let's start with the concept of how do you even approach it? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest uh, challenge that people face is how they view themselves 
and mm-hmm. how they view the people they're trying to reach out to. So as long if you if you're gonna view the person that you're trying to reach out to as someone that's better than you, you're never gonna be able to actually you know con- connect with them because mm-hmm. you're gonna always feel like you're catching up or you're not good enough or you overdo it or maybe you have a fangirl moment or and you kind of freak out when mm-hmm. you shouldn't or depends on who you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. See the people I've dealt with are like you know, I've dealt with all kinds of people. I've dealt with like businessmen at the highest level. I've also I've al- I've also dealt with you know a lot of a lists and celebrities mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. like that and. I treat everyone the same. Mm-hmm. It actually doesn't change whatsoever. Like I remember when I met Magic Johnson a couple of weeks ago, we I literally like I just pulled off a joke. That was how I approached it. He was standing <laughs> right behind me. I look at him and I'm like, "Hey Magic, uh how do, how's the view from up there?" I always pull off a short <laughs> that joke. That was a nice it, icebreaker. <laughs> it, yeah, it works. And so we started laughing it off and we were cool, had a quick chat and everything like that. So I I don't treat anyone differently. So I want to make sure before we even get into how do you network is mm-hmm. like, how do you approach this? Mm-hmm. You got to understand that you're dealing with humans. They're all the same. Right? We were just having that conversation right before you got here yeah. about the same thing. They're all yeah. the same. Even when I feel as if I'm being treated differently, I literally would call the person out and say, man, I'm just like you. Chill out. Tell me what you want. Because I've, mm-hmm. I've like I've had very little moments you know i'm not necessarily anything close yet to where i want to be but i have very little moments of people that you know have been following me for a while and then they finally get to meet me and Mm -hmm. i can just tell they're kind of having a little like i don't know what to say to this guy you know and so i kind of like i always like to break the ice like calm it down like i'm (laughs) really nothing special you know and um but but understanding that we're all human at the end of the day that in terms of just the natural laws of humanity, Mm -hmm, morals mm -hmm. and values, uh, you are on the same plat field that they're playing on. Mm -hmm. The only difference is they chose a certain career path that they've advanced in. Mm -hmm, That's it, it mm -hmm. doesn't change the fact that you also have that same opportunity to do the same thing and probably even better because you're younger than this person Mm -hmm. or whatever it may be, or even if you're older, you're just in in a society today that I'm sure when they started, they didn't have the necessary tools that you have today. You know, and so don't think of yourself as, oh, my God, this person is better than me. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, this person is this. And I hate when I see that dynamic, especially in the space we're in. Yeah, there's so much of it, so much of it. And I am, by the way, like the biggest thing you're going to realize on podcasts, is I have no filter. I'm going to come out and call out <laughs> so many people that I see in the space that are known. Who are you? Who do you think you are to have an ego that makes you think mm-hmm. like I'm better than the other mm-hmm. person? Because. It's happening in both ways, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's happening from the person that's not necessarily that successful. When they network with the person that's successful, they feel this like detachment. Mm -hmm. And the person that's successful is purposely super egotistical about their success. So they're creating that detachment between the mentor and the mentee. And so now when the mentee wants to approach the mentor, they're like, "Ah, I feel it. Like, yeah, yeah. I felt it. it. (laughs) Like I met this certain person. I'm not going to say his name. A couple weeks ago at an event. Mm -hmm. Big name in the space. Hey, how you doing? Good. In my head, I'm nothing different than him. I'm actually, I like, you know, in my head, like, I have this weird cocky sense of mine that I'm like, yeah. I'm always better than, you know, what I need to be. I'm always of trying course. to better myself, right? Um, but so I kind of approach him and he was like, hey, what do you do? And so I start talking. And as I'm talking, this guy, I swear to God, this is him. He's like. Really? No eye contact. No eye contact. And I'm like. Like, I literally just stopped talking. I'm like, who do you you think you are? You know, like, why would you even, like, why would you ask me a question Mm -hmm. and then don't give me eye contact Mm -hmm. thinking you're too cool to, like, listen. Like, I'm not, I'm not about to communicate Mm -hmm. with you. I just literally, I backed away. I walked away. I literally walked away. And this guy is a big name in the space. So if I tell you who it is, you're going to be like, you're crazy. I walked away. I don't give two shits. We'll we'll talk offline now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I don't give two shits about who you are. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's the biggest thing. Guys, when you're listening to this, really take this. I'm not telling you to be like, oh, I'm better than you. I'm telling you, no, you guys are all on the same mm-hmm. plat field, plain field, sorry. So mm-hmm. like if they, if you don't get the respect you want, don't give them the respect that they, you think they deserve, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. Once you have that mindset, networking with anyone becomes super easy because now you understand that you are valuable. You actually have value. You exist on this earth for a reason. I say this so many times. God doesn't make accidents. Mm. That reminds me of the the conversation. I, oh, the, the interview I had with Tim Story. Mm. He's like, there's a purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had it like, today, right? I had it this yeah, morning, yeah. yeah. Awesome guy. And that's exactly what he talks about. Like, it was already, it's embedded. It's a plan. It's a purpose. Yeah. You just have to go go towards it. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's the thing. But, um, yeah, you have a very, very good point there. So, let's backtrack just a little bit. Sure. 
Um, did, what? So growing up, went to college. Yeah. What did you always want to do? <laughs> I had no idea. So nothing. No, no, no. Okay, so all how, I wanted to do was wake up, go to school, screw around, and not really care for you about anything. So how did this come about? Great the question. Podcast, the media. Yeah. Um, so in college, I got into college at 15 and a half. Wow. I took the chess bee. So I failed the chess bee like twice. By the way, I used to fail every single test. I had to, re- it was like a common thing in my head. I had a belief in my head that I had to take a test more than once. And I don't think I broke it just yet where like it actually purposely makes mm-hmm. me fail on things. But anyway, um, so I, I'm literally the kid who, it, it, despite all of this, I had, uh, I had, I had kind of a lack of confidence and a lack of self-esteem. Mm. Um, I think that's the only thing that maybe homeschooling may have affected me in versus not socializing was fine i love socializing but growing up for some reason i always felt like i wasn't good enough mm-hmm. for some reason i always felt like i was detached i was a weird kid like uh oh he's homeschooled oh did you ever go to middle school no did you ever have a birthday party no did you he ever completely different from it's just culture yeah you know that's all it yeah. was but i always felt like growing up in this culture i was left out i also just you know not to get too sensitive but like 9 11 happened i'm muslim mm-hmm. you know so i was really i i felt that firsthand you know and you were affected by it your family everybody. 100 percent. Yeah. oh 100 percent. like my mom just for wearing a scarf was now looked upon as like a target like imagine that like imagine feeling that growing up and it's just like okay so i had that i had that right those challenges but uh going into college though what happened was i was like okay like i i'm also very 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 direct with mm-hmm. the way i talk to myself uh kind of a little harsh i think mm-hmm. in my opinion but it works i asked myself very direct questions so when i got into college i told myself okay adam you're in college are you gonna sit here and dwell on your past and worry or are you just gonna open a new book and actually try to live a happy life what do you want do you want to be depressed mm-hmm. and then the answer was like well no i don't want to be depressed <laughs> it's like okay well the only other option you have is to just man up and just deal with whatever's going on. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So I had that convo with myself. And so I eventually started doing things that were out of my comfort zone. So I started, you know, I joined the uh, the student body uh, the student body in college. And it's actually funny because I ran for president. Wow. I ran for president and I won. I actually had the most votes ever seen on campus because I was just, I, I, I would skip school to go and, you know, get the votes for, you know, for whatever I wanted to do in, in student body. Because that's so you're how much... literally hustling, right? Yeah. Hustling, <laughs> hustling for some vote. Hustling in the terminology. But I didn't know I was doing yeah. this. This was all like... It was all natural. This was all natural. This gift. wasn't like was necessarily... Gift. Yeah, thankfully. See, like, I, I, I do realize that now. But I had no idea what I was doing. I was just... I think the, the number one lesson people can take that I can take too, because I always think of like, what was I actually doing is I was just taking on anything I can to... You see how, like, Gary always says, like, uh, Gary Vee talks about this all the time. Like, just try things. Just try it. I mm-hmm. was doing that just accidentally. Just because, mm-hmm. like, school was so boring to me that I wanted to do something else. Like, I'm like, okay, I have to fill up my life with something else. So I would try to get a job. I would try to do this. Mm-hmm. I would try to do that. I would try to get an internship. I got an internship at a, at a freaking biomedical engineering company mm-hmm. when I barely was a college student. I figured out mm-hmm. a way to get it. I don't know. I just got it. You know, I stayed there for, like, two months, realized I hated biomedical engineering, so I left. You, you know, tried I, it, though. You had to try it for you to trying so realize. many stuff, mm-hmm. uh, so many things. Like, I was, I was, I had a YouTube channel back then. I tried prank videos. I tried, I've done so many, like, different projects. I Reminds can, me like, a lot of my brother. My brother did all of that. <laughs> yeah, like, back and forth. And so when I got into college, I was like, okay, I'm bored. I want to do something. So I ran for president. And I will never forget the moment when, like, they posted the the uh you know who won and stuff and i was like oh my god i actually won this is insane what what's and that's cool is that you're running a student government so mm-hmm. i was running like 250 students uh, about 15 faculty members mm-hmm. i had an advisor it was me and an advisor so we would we would we would manage all that mm-hmm. stuff and we had like a pretty decent budget we were dealing with a lot of cool stuff that was probably the biggest shift mm. Because what I started to realize is I'm not getting paid for this job. However, I would skip school and not study for tests just so I can spend more time planning out the future of IVC. Like I used to go to Irvine Valley College, mm-hmm. the future of IVC in terms of like I was such a nerd. Like I actually used to get, I got <laughs> like, called out back. for it. I got called out for it. They're like a lot of people would be like, dude, chill out. It's college. Why are you taking this so seriously? But I, I just. You didn't, you didn't realize I didn't it care. at the time. I didn't I just loved it. Like, we we opened 45 communities. We raised money for the school. We hired, like, ten, five or ten faculty mm-hmm. members. So it actually decreased the amount of time it took for people to transfer. Like, oh, wow. we were doing real things, you know? But like you were making moves. In, the I mean, term, like, in that world. Yeah, in that yes, world. Of in that course. world. I didn't think of it like that, though. To mm-hmm. me, I was just having fun. So then what happened after college? So um, here's the big turnaround that... I haven't really ever gone deep on, but um, 18-year-old hits, 
I'm this Muslim kid who's following everything I should religiously and unfortunately just had like a bit of a turnaround. Uh, I, I'm going to be open about it just because I feel like people can learn a lesson or two about it. But started putting myself around the wrong crowd. Mm, okay. um, started allowing the attention I had to kind of, I guess, track me aside. Like I got to a point where I'd walk on campus. Everyone knew my name. Like it was kind of like and it wasn't it wasn't necessarily like purposely. It's just mm-hmm. I had that personality. Mm-hmm. It was, as a kid growing up, if I walked into a room, I walked out with everybody talking either smack about me or good. Like, mm-hmm. just everyone knew me. You know, mm-hmm. it was like a weird thing that I had. It's still, you can still see it happen in mm-hmm. business, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, yeah, so I started doing a lot of things that I shouldn't. I started experimenting with drugs. Started, mm-hmm. you know, going out. I never really partied. Never really did anything. It was really the drugs that got me. Um, it, it became a thing where after school, I first started doing it after school, smoking weed. And then... I got to a point where I was doing it when I was, you know, in meetings, you know, as the president and in, in, in student government. Never got caught with that. So, uh, you know, I don't know if like... So it became more of a habit. Became more of right? a habit. Yeah. And then I got bored of that. So then I upgraded to LSD. And then... Oh, man. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, it I, got pretty deep. Yeah, it got really deep. And so <laughs> fast forward eight months into that, overdosed on Molly. Molly, I think Molly acid. I don't know. It was mixed with some crap. I remember before I did it, there was like a white and black rock in it that just didn't seem right. So it could have been mixed. Could have been mixed. Whatever. For all Mm -hmm. I know. And I was an idiot. But I was like, you know, screw it. uh, Whatever. So I popped it. Woo! Just coming up to the subject makes me like freaky. Um, went through a very big religious transformation in terms of um what i saw when what i believe my heart stopped because while you were in that moment yes Mm -hmm. so i was i was passed out for like a good 20 seconds unconscious completely and i remember um it felt like hours literally felt like hours in those moments i saw myself embark on this journey where i pretty much saw my soul entering hellfire somewhere i'd definitely don't want to be and um uh i you know i basically had a moment where i heard this voice tell me that if i continued what i was doing i'm going to end up somewhere i don't want to end up however i'm going to be given a second chance Mm -hmm. because i'm quote-unquote meant to change the world i actually heard that now i don't know like don't this is like i don't know if i was going crazy or some <laughs> drug I've met, but i actually heard a voice tell me that you're meant to change the world you have to though change what you're <clears throat> doing today it's it's crazy how in that moment that's when you heard it it was surreal it so was would you, would you say that that was your your breakthrough your your pivotal moment that really shifted your perspective 100 percent Okay, so what happened after that? I woke up, and when I woke up, <laughs> I woke up. <laughs> I just, I just, I do this so much. I just thought of a funny Insta clip while I'm, while I'm talking. About, I woke up. Um, uh, I woke up and I went to the bathroom, and I remember looking at my pupils, and they were my eyes were black because my pupils were so dilated. Uh, and I remember just looking at myself and telling myself, um, that this is the last time I will ever see myself in a position this vulnerable. Um, And so from there, I dropped out of school. I dropped out not because I like everyone thinks I dropped out because, oh, I started a journey. I dropped out because I got so depressed, uh, so scared of life. I had no idea how to focus. Like, like, I remember going to school just to basically see people because mm-hmm. I was so sad and just mentally gone. I was going through withdrawals. Uh, so I never actually went to rehab or anything. I just took it on. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never went to rehab or anything like that. I just, just cold turkeyed everything and just like bring it on. So during those times when you hit withdrawals, when you hit depression. Yeah what 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 did you do how how did you escape from that because there are um, a lot of people that i'm sure that are going through that whether it's depression whether it's drug use or just sure. co- overcoming something sure how do you tell that person that is watching to get sure. out of that 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 dark place i think that experience that i had made me realize god is real 
Mm, that's powerful. And so knowing that God is real, I knew that no matter, I, I realized that his perspective of life is much more macro than my perspective. And so in my little micro little dot, I'm freaking out about my little things like, and by the way, I know depression's a real thing. I'm not making fun of anyone who has that. I'm just saying the way I looked at it was like this. Again, because I'm really hardcore, right? It was kind of like, I yes, I'm going through all of this, but the guy next to me isn't, which means the world is still fine. So compared to whatever problem I think I'm dealing with to the actual reality of what the world in the future looks like, it's really, really small. So I realized, okay, if that's the case, that means God has my back. That means God has a plan for me that's, hey, look, I could have died. Like I literally could have died you know, back on mm-hmm. that bed when that happened. Why didn't I? Because God. Well, yeah. Why didn't I? It, it means that I'm I'm on a journey. It mm-hmm. means that there's a that my, my, my life isn't done yet, you know? And I remember always telling myself, all right, Adam, then if that's the case, let's count to five. If you're still alive, you're going to just deal with it. It's like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm not dead yet. If I was meant to die... Like, it became really extreme. Like, the only way I think I got out of it was my northern compass was God. Mm -hmm, Like, always. mm -hmm. Like, okay, if he's there, if he's, if I know he's there, that means that he's, he's protecting me. Even if I do die, it means now I'm purified and I'm good to go. You know, like, I can, I can go, you know. It's it's basically his plan. His plan. So it's like you you surrendered and you allowed him to lead you. Yeah. At that point. But I also, at the same time, though, even like, look, here's how I think of it, right? If, let's say you're in battle. Your leader leads you, correct? Mm-hmm. However, if you don't fight for yourself, what happens? You're dead. <laughs> you, you die. Yeah. Same concept, right? And actually, you know, I don't want to compare that to God how, because God is much more massive. You but still got to put in the work. Exactly. You still got to put I in like the work. I like to always give you that example because mm-hmm. it makes it make mm-hmm. sense of it. Well, mm-hmm. you still got to put in the work. Even though he's leading you, he's creating the path for you. You still got to put in the work. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I chilled back and I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go relapse. And, and I'm, yeah. no, 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 no. Of it's like I had to figure it out. But you asked me, like, how do you deal with it? First stop was that. Second step was, okay, now that I know God exists and now that I know he's taking care of me, I have to deal with how I'm feeling. Because it's not like the feeling just Right, vanishes. it doesn't go away. I was I was dealing with sleep paralysis. I would have moments where I would wake up at 2 in the morning thinking I'm dying, seeing things, running around in circles in the kitchen, just trying to, like, please, please, whatever's happening around, just stop. Trying to drink water, but I can't because I'm shaking. Like, really thinking I'm dying. I and, remember, sleep, and sleep paralysis is no joke. Oh, yeah. No joke. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I'll tell you this. I got to a certain point where when it happened, and if it happens now, you won't even know. Like, wow. if I have a panic attack right now, I'm just going to ride the wave and deal with the pain mm-hmm. and just continue staying focused. I had to really develop thick skin. Um, that was my second step. First step was, okay, God has a plan for you, which means you're meant to live. Mm-hmm. So don't be thinking about no suicide or anything crazy like that, mm-hmm. right? If I'm meant to live, that means no matter how hard life looks like to me right now there's probably a better version of it Mm -hmm. and that's what this this concept right here is what continues helping me build the business and everything that i do on a day-to-day basis um no matter how hard you know things seem right now if you're still breathing Mm -hmm. it means you have something better planned for you period a bigger calling for your life a bigger calling Mm -hmm. whether that calling is to be a better father a better mother or a calling is to go out there and make a billion dollars it's just a better calling and you will know when that moment comes like you will remember that moment you will i I, i'm sure you've had moments where like something good happened and you're like wait i remember like two years ago i was thinking to myself life is just hell Mm -hmm. now look at me now you know what i mean so it's like whether it's like having a broken leg thinking that you'll never be able to walk and then all of a sudden now you're running and it's, you don't know you just if you're still alive and you're still breathing there is really no reason for you to like be depressed in my honest opinion that's absolutely after though a lot of struggle mm-hmm. that's like eight months of consistent struggle that made me come up with this like even still talking about it right now is like you know making me shake because it's it was a very it was real it, was, it, was, it real. was so real. It was so real. So what tools and strategies would you say that you took to get you to where you are today? Um, being real with yourself is number one. That's the first thing that comes to my mind because I think 99% of the conversations that I have with myself, if not 100, is, okay, step one, Adam, be real. What are you dealing with right now? So facing your emotions. Facing it. Just mm-hmm. like blatantly, like face to face. You're like, hey, listen, like, because at the end of the day, my mind goes like this. Do I want to live a life that's full of terror, depression, problems, challenges? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Who the heck wants to live a life like that? Mm -hmm. And if that's you, 
then I need to have a different conversation with you because probably you're really too deep into whatever is mm -hmm, going on. Mm -hmm. But on the aspect, like in the in the reality of things, nobody ever wants to have like a bad day. Of course. Yeah. So if, if it's in my control, I'm going to try my best to live life in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean you all of a sudden become Superman and you start not of dealing course. with things. You know what I'm saying? Or like the Matrix I mean, dodging human. bullets. Yeah. So that, that was like a, a big... Number one thing, like, okay, so now that I understand that, I have to be real with myself. Because if you're not, you're never going to be able to have a conversation about mm -hmm. anything. Um, and so that conversation goes something like this. Like, all right, let's just say, uh, let's say your podcast right now. I'm trying to get this specific guest on. I'm not being able to get the guest. Okay, cool. Oh, my podcast is probably not good enough. Oh, like when the devil comes in, oh, I'm probably not big enough. Oh, I don't have enough numbers. A lot of self-doubt. Yeah, I right? only have, I only have, I have, oh. I have less than, for example, I saw like your follower mm -hmm. count, right? Mm -hmm. I have like less than 10,000. I've had that mm -hmm. conversation with myself. Mm -hmm. I have less than 100,000 followers. I have less than mm -hmm. this. I'm not mm -hmm. cool. I'm not verified. Whatever all this mm -hmm. crap, right? You got to stop all that. Stop, 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 mm -hmm. stop, 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 stop. Right? Absolutely. Right? Ask yourself this. Okay. Sure. You can lay out the negative facts. You can do that all day. But where the hell is that going to get you? Is that going to get you the guest? Absolutely not. No. Is that going to get nope. you the, the, the result you want? No, it's not. So stop. Just mm -hmm. stop doing that. So once you stop that action, you're already now a step closer mm -hmm. to an mm -hmm. abundant mindset. Mm -hmm. Just just like put that aside. Now, the second step is, okay, what, what do I want? Why am I like this? Why am I feeling depressed? Or why am I feeling overwhelmed? And have mm. a very real moment. Because a lot of bullshit will come up. How often would you say you have those conversations with yourself? Every single day. Mm. Every single minute. Every single second. Everything I'm telling you guys right now, I go through every single day. And it's real. It's real life. And I, I could attest to that because yeah. I go through that daily. And I, I feel like we all go through it in different ways. Sure. Depending on what we want in our life. Yeah. But it's real. I think, I think to have just a little moment right here, I think what's really cool about the story we're creating at Mogul is that I'm doing what a lot of people didn't do before what Gary Vee says he wish he did, which is yeah. document his up and coming. Mm -hmm. I'm currently in that process. Mm -hmm. And that's why I create as much content as I possibly can. Maybe I'm not as consistent because I'm also building so many things mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily have every single resource. Like Gary has like 50 people on his media team. I'm not there yet. Right. Will I get there? I think I'm going to get there and crush it and dominate. Mm -hmm. To be honest, mm -hmm. even if he's listening to this, I actually think I look at myself as competition, right? Because watch out, I'm up and coming. But the cool part about what we're doing and even like Hisham's here, he, he runs operations too. I love this guy. I mean, without him, like he he has been a humongous reason to why I continue to like just hammer it every day. Because mm -hmm. when I go nuts, he just knows it. Like I have a team on like around me that understands how crazy of a mo of a mofo, I am, <laughs> right? And and they deal with it and they're okay with it and they and they and they go with it, right? Because there is a level of insanity to doing all of this, right? Absolutely. You know. But anyway, not to get too crazy into that. But the 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 thing is, is like. What I'm doing, what we're doing differently is like documenting all of that because mm -hmm. a lot of people. And you're actually, you're really that. good at that. You're really good at that. Oh, I appreciate and it. And everything that you put out there. And that's something that I need to do more of is put more of me out there, my journey. I feel like we got the content now, but it's more like, okay, people want to be relatable to you. You want me to tell you a trick? Yeah. So you know how I'm telling you right now um, how to like just be real with yourself? Mm -hmm. Here's how you want to be real with yourself. I'm very extreme. I think extreme results require extreme actions, period. And I like so. That. You know, if you want to really, really put out good content, start doing it for the reason of keeping you accountable. Mm. I'm doing podcasts a lot this year because I want everyone to know what we're doing so that I can go back to work and say, fudge, if I don't need like, what if I have a day that I don't feel like working? Well, I told 100,000 people I'm yeah, doing this, yeah. you know, like I have to pull this off. You, you got to be accountable to your own word. I have to. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of me creating my content, by the way, comes for that reason. What people don't understand is I love creating content because, yes, I love getting the messages. Hey, I'm inspired. But the real reason is just because it makes me accountable. It makes me feel like I have to pull through and it puts me out there. Like it forces me to get in my uncomfort zone. So you would definitely say that is it is an it is an uncomfortable feeling for you. Are you kidding me? I have so many mm. days where I don't want to create content. The heck? I'm not feeling it right now. I don't have to put on my yeah. phone. I'm so busy. Like, I don't like that's what I tell myself sometimes. Like, I'm so busy. Like, I like yesterday back to back to back meetings mm -hmm. you know like i literally barely had time to breathe by the time we had time to breathe i told Hisham, i was like yo let's go to the gym you know let's go to the gym let's 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 take a minute and then when i'm at the gym i'm trying to relax when i'm gonna pull out my phone i'm like hey guys how's everything doing Bro, like my brain can't handle Two in it. arms right now guys yeah, you know like sometimes i don't want to create content i don't yeah i can relate to you i feel like sometimes like if i take one day off two days it's like 
wow, it feels peaceful staying away from social media for yeah. a little bit. It's like a job, <laughs> you know? It is a job. It is a job. <laughs> I'm like, damn, is this what it feels it like? It is a job. It is a job, yeah. <laughs> Man, okay, so let's talk. Is it Mogul Insider? Mogul Ooh, Insider, yes. Got it. Yes. All right, so let's talk about that. How cool. did that come about? And it all, it all started first from starting a podcast. Podcasting, All right, yes. so let's, let's dive there first. Cool. So right after the whole OD thing, what happened is for like eight months, I was just doing a lot, a lot, a lot of just self-education. Okay. I think it's a very important part for people to know mm-hmm. in the story. Um, like before Mogul Insider, there was about two and a half years of just pure self-education. I didn't go to school, but I pretty much read every book I possibly can. Like, I'm looking at your books here. I've read every single one of them here, except maybe, like, two of them. So, like, a lot, like, you know, I I've I read a ton of books, and I continue to read a ton of books. I'm not reading as much as I want to, mm-hmm. but I still read a lot. Um, right now, I'm reading uh, uh, Principles by Ray Dalio. Mm. Ooh, such a good book. I think, didn't you start reading that one? Mm-hmm. Such a good book. Uh, so, anyway, so a lot, a lot of that happened. And mm-hmm. then I started a business with my dad. Started a IT cybersecurity company. Nice. Yeah, I kind of I kind of came into his house one um, his house his room one day and I was like I was like hey look I've been you know really trying to figure out what I want to do in life because you know apparently I have this calling I have to mm-hmm. fulfill right and I came to realize that there's really nothing about school that makes me feel satisfied. Mm-hmm. I did really well as a president at IBC. Uh, every single job I ever got, I always ended up either becoming the assistant manager or ran the place within like a couple weeks. So you always excelled. You always Super knew that you were quick. good at, at doing that. It's not that. It's because I don't find like, to me, I have nothing against people who work nine to fives, uh, but I don't find life fun if you're not every single day mm-hmm. growing. I agree. I mm-hmm. find that boring. Mm-hmm. Really. You know? Mm-hmm. So if I have a job, I'm not growing. That, that's really all. That's the only reason why I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I love entrepreneurship. Mm. I don't do it because it's cool on Instagram. I don't mm-hmm. f- screw that. Like I literally started all of this before any of that was even a thing. Like Instagram just recently started to pop off with the whole, mm-hmm. oh look at me, I'm an entrepreneur. You know, like I don't, I don't do that. Like to me, growing up, it was just you owned a business. That's true. That's it. That's you just true. owned a business. It was another career. It was like just like a doctor, a lawyer, mm-hmm. engineer. It's just another. T- it's another choice. So I don't think of it as anything special. It's just mm-hmm. I decided to take that route. You know, it just so happened that now entrepreneurs are like celebrities or something. It was so interesting. <laughs> Right? No, it's true. <laughs> Which I, I kind of so dig because it allows us to really create all but that cool content. Times are but times are different, though. Like you yeah, said it before, yeah. like even going back to the nine to five, right? Yeah. Like society expects us to get a high education, work that nine to five corporate job, but you're pretty much slaved. I don't, I don't, you're not that. fulfilled. And that's something that I realized because uh, I was chasing the wrong thing. I think, I think it's, it's, uh, look, if I have kids, if I get kids, um, which I think I will very soon. I'm like, you know, don't I, go to school. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not that. It's uh, I um, I would train them on certain things. Uh, for example, money management would be huge. Uh, another thing that I would train them on would be understanding how to communicate. Mm. So like I would literally get my kid in trouble if he says something incorrectly because I find that to be very, very important. I also want my kid to be super confident, super um, direct with what mm-hmm. they want and mm-hmm. need. And I will do that through certain things. I think school is just teaching the wrong things. Mm-hmm. Like I school agree. is very necessary. Look, I even though I dropped out, I still educate myself every single day. You have to be educated. I just think school focuses on things that don't freaking matter. They're not irrelevant anymore. They're not. They're mm-hmm. irrelevant in today's mm-hmm. society. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like really, really the game has changed, you know. And so, you know, I'm not a parent. I don't, I don't know how to parent at all. Not even close. But I'm just saying like, you know, if I ever have, you know, when I ever have kids, it's mm-hmm. just going to be very different in terms of like, how I train them, I'm homeschooling them for sure. That's number one. Like, yeah, boom, they're not going into the system. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Not that crap. No way. Uh, my my kid, my my kid, my kids are gonna be like dope. My kids, like, oh my god, like I can I can already tell. Like, my kids are gonna like my 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 little kids are gonna be like really really good at what they do. Like, really young. I believe that. Really, especially young. you as a father, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna they're they're gonna they're gonna have probably more money than I ever had when they were at their age. You know, just and they're gonna make it themselves. You know, like so like I think doing that will set them up more than anything because guess what by the way if i train my kids for 20 years on how to make money and how to how to how to learn how to network how to build relationships provide value even if they decide not to run their own business i promise you they will Mm -hmm. land a much better job than Than, anyone who actually went through school period Mm -hmm. that i can i can guarantee all my money on that because you if you if you knew people and everyone knows you and, and you've provided value for like as a kid and growing up 
Imagine knowing like the CEO it's of HBO right or something mm-hmm. like that. You're guaranteed in. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want. So you we're going we're, we're gonna to look, what, back, what, five, ten years from now probably, on this episode yeah. and be like, I told you. <laughs> oh, exactly. Not gonna be, I mean, five, ten years are probably still growing, but maybe, maybe give it 15. <laughs> um, 15? No. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so I started the business with my dad. And then um, what happened after that was for a good two years, same struggle happened, which I got to a point where I didn't feel like I was growing. Mm. This is the part where I love my dad. And he's a great guy, but this is where we didn't see eye to eye at all. No way. We didn't see eye to eye at all. I was very ambitious, motivated. I want to figure it out. And the challenge was I didn't have experience. So a lot of the stuff I was doing was... Trial and error. Trial and error. Mm-hmm. And my dad saw it as irresponsible. Mm. He's like, my dad saw it as I have family to feed. You can't just be risking things. Right, right. You know, I'm a huge risk taker. And I think I even tell whoever it is that, you know... If you're out there, whoever it is that ends up marrying you or whatever it is, you know, like I'm a huge risk taker. I tell everyone that I meet to make sure that you understand who they're dealing with. Like before you get to know me, I, I tell you straight up everything you need to know. Like, do you still want to get to know me? Awesome. Now let's have a conversation. <laughs> if you don't, it's okay. I don't, I'm not hurt. Mm-hmm. I just like to cut through all the shit, mm-hmm. you know? And so, um, he didn't like that. He thought of it as irresponsible. And I can see why. I mean, there's obviously a lot of things that I messed up in mm-hmm. drugs. I was, I got into debt. Um, you know, I also put in more debt building the business. I was like 40, 50 K in debt. I had good credit lines. So mm-hmm. I opened credit, screwed that up. I'm still today rebuilding it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was always a risk taker. I don't know. I got a motorcycle after my OD. <laughs> I went skydiving. I just love taking risks. He hated that. So how does he feel now with what you're doing with the entrepreneur, the podcast, I mean, I the media? He, I think he's proud, but I think he's still waiting. I, I definitely mm-hmm. think my story is still like I'm I'm not going to sit here and try to act like I'm successful. Uh, my, my story is still building uh, and also depending on the level of success I'm trying to achieve. Right. Because a lot of the players in the space we're in are they look kind of small compared to what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of it is like, OK, let me just I understand where I'm at. I understand where I'm at and I don't I don't bitch about it. Like, I don't bitch about the fact that, you know, maybe someone who has $100 million doesn't look at me the same that I want him to. I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not $100 million deep mm-hmm. yet, you know? Like, period. I didn't, gain, I didn't gain his respect. So I don't really bitch about that those things. But I think he's still, he's definitely still waiting. Like, like there's a lot of times, and I think even Hisham, because we're, uh, Hisham can, like, testify to this. Like, there's a lot of times where he speaks to me in terms of like certain things in business where he really wants to listen to what I have to say, but he still has his like filter and opinion added mm. on top of it because he's worried that I'm still figuring things out. And I've had so many conversations with him when he was like, Adam, are you sure it's going to work out? Adam, like it's been like two, three months, nothing's happened. What's going on? Like Adam this, Adam that, like I've had so many of those. So yeah, he's do not. They, do, do those things get to you when he says that? Uh, again, thick skin. Mm. Business requires thick skin entrepreneurship requires thick skin anything you do requires thick skin i don't even call it entrepreneurship i just call it if you're on your own journey if you're trying to create your own thing it requires thick skin you're gonna go through a battle mm-hmm. so if you don't have that i'm sure you can testify to it you know and you naturally build it though now how fast you build it allows you to like there's a lot of small tips that i can mm-hmm. tell people on like how to grow quicker and it all comes down to speed and accuracy and efficiency really like if you're fast and mm-hmm. you get real with yourself you can grow much quicker Mm-hmm. So like cut through all that bullshit, but it's all, it's all thick skin. So like, does it? Yes. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Like, yes, I'm human. Of course. You know, but uh, I'm not gonna sit here and say no, no, no. It does. It affects me. I've had days where I've cried in my car. I've had days where, and I'm super open about it because I I want people to understand. Like guys, like all this stuff you see on social media, of like oh look at me, I'm successful. Like, dude, that's not life. That's mm-hmm. not life at all. You know, I've cried. I've just recently, two weeks ago, I was just driving and I just started. Bawling, like literally, but like I don't, I, I don't know why. I just, I was, <laughs> that was me what, a couple weeks ago. Too. <laughs> yeah. I was telling my partner, I'm like, I don't know why I'm emotional. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I was just dealing with so much in terms of like what I thought was a lot mm-hmm. in that moment, and I just started to just for 20 straight minutes just cry, 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 like just letting it all out. Um. So yeah, all these things do affect me. Does it stop me? Is the question. Mm. No, doesn't stop me. Right? Does mm-hmm. it affect me? Yeah, doesn't stop me. Something I learned recently, uh, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Um, oh, man, Kobe Bryant. I started adapting a lot of the things he does. It's going to sound really psychopathic, but I found the idea of him having an alter ego very attractive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started doing it. So I have, 
I, I call I have I have an inside joke and I'll say it on the podcast, but I'm not gonna talk too much about it. Where like between us, we I was telling myself like, okay, like I have Adam, right? And growing up, I thought like as a superhero, Batman was super cool because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to me, he was that billionaire businessman, all that kind of stuff that I wanted to do. But he was also very human, but still fought crime and all that kind of. So I call my I have my alter ego is called the Dark Knight. Ooh. And so the Dark Knight, when he goes to work. Just kind of like same concept like Kobe, mm-hmm. right? Dark Knight, when he goes to work, he has no problems. The challenge is nothing. Adam, on the other hand, has a crap ton. He's, he's human. Yeah, of course. He has problems all the time. But does it stop the Dark Knight? No. Right? Does it start? Got that, does it st- that mama mentality. Does it stop? I, I really started the kind of... It's funny because I I, I I do this a lot. Um, I think one big strength I have, or I don't know if it's weird or I don't know, but like I download people's personalities. Mm-hmm. I swear to God. Uh, if I find it uh, attractive and if I find it good for whatever I'm doing, I just copy it. I have no problem in copying people's things because you like for you to set up a good future, you need to understand what helped people in the past mm-hmm. and learn from them and learn from them. Mm-hmm. Period. If you have if you if you can't if you're too cool for that, you're never going to grow. I'm always a student in life. So mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant, Bill Gates. I watched the documentary he made. Uh, Jeff Bezos. I, re- I read a lot about how he does business, how he conducts business. So he conducts like minutes, uh, meetings in like five minutes. Mm-hmm. It's the way he creates a schedule. I, I study people. I told you ever since mm-hmm. I was a kid, I've always loved studying people. So and who so, would you say your top three influencers are? I don't call them influencers. I call them just real businessmen. Uh, um, I, I think I think uh, growing up, Bill Gates has been shout out to you, my man. Like I grew up watching him do his moves and biggest biggest goal this year is to get in front of him and uh potentially set up some sort of interview but uh he's oh my god he's i, I envy him i actually envy him because the one thing i don't necessarily the one challenge in my head that i always deal with that's an insecurity of mine is i'm i don't I, i'm very visionary but i'm not yet an innovator mm-hmm. i haven't gotten to that level yet and that bothers me a lot like you're still trying to figure it out yeah yeah oh pff, yeah but that bothers me a lot. Yeah. Like I want to create the next Apple, so bad, so bad. I, it's I, possible. And all right, that's not even a question in my mm-hmm. head. It's not about is it possible. It's not. I never. I never. My struggle in my head is never is it possible. Mm-hmm. It's how are you gonna do it and what are you gonna do with it. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm not doing it for the money. I just think like, let's let's talk about this for a sec. Let's just say you employ, just a thousand people. Mm-hmm. That's a thousand families that are being fed because of whatever amazing idea that you created and God helped you create. That's just one aspect. Now you're making a billion dollars a year. A hundred million of that is profit. You pocket 50, whatever, right? Now you have $50 million in your mm-hmm. pocket. You spend that on nonprofit organizations. So now you're helping more. You're more, still more, helping more, more, more people. More, 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 it's a ripple more, effect. More, right? Because of your company though, you're moving the way the world thinks, walks, talks, and providing resources for people that can't have it. So, in business, I think if you don't necessarily think big, I believe in Grant Cardone's philosophy that if you don't think big, you're selfish. Mm, yeah, he does say that. I believe in that, mm-hmm. and I know I know I can get a lot of hate for that because what do you mean selfish? Even my own parents be like, "What do you mean selfish?" I'm like, "No, I think you're selfish. If you don't want to make a lot of money, just get a job. Right? Mm-hmm. That's nothing wrong with that. There's really nothing wrong with that. But if you're gonna get in the space of entrepreneurship and business, do your best. Period. Do your best. At least do your best. That's the least you can give it. If you're not doing your best, why are you in the game? The game requires the best, period. It's a great perspective. It doesn't like anything mm-hmm. else. It doesn't provide value to anyone else. Why, though, is a question. I'm not doing it for the money. I actually, one big goal I changed in the company, we changed in the company this year, was uh, our goal was to get it to about almost in eight figures, mm-hmm. right? Um, I'm not going to say the certain number. I'm just you know, just going to say, like, that's what we're trying mm-hmm. to get to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and... Basically, we told ourselves, wait, instead of thinking of this as like a dollar sign, let's think of it as providing value. So now my goal is to meet a thousand strategic partners that I provide value to that in return will build a relationship that will cultivate into becoming a part of the mogul family. That's powerful. I love that. All right. Which just by doing that, I think I'll beat my goal even more. Right. So I'm not I don't like I actually it's funny because when I started the company, I got caught up in this like philosophy is how you should build a mm-hmm. business and i mm-hmm. realized wait wait stop 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 the cool thing about entrepreneurship is you can be creative and do whatever you want mm-hmm. let's start doing whatever we want mm-hmm. so i went back to my roots of what helped me build the podcast which is relationship but anyway i don't want to get too sidetracked but we were talking about like you know how mogul started and all mm-hmm. that stuff mm-hmm. so 
after that, uh, two years into the whole, you know, conversation, uh, the whole, sorry, process, the journey with my dad, I had a moment where I like, I don't really feel like I'm going anymore. I, I feel like I'm being chained. I feel like I'm not allowed to be creative. I'm not allowed to even learn. Like, yes, I'm going to screw up, but let me screw up. I want to screw up. Mm-hmm. I really want to fail. Stop. My biggest thing that I tell my dad that I wish he always like just did differently Stop trying to, like, because out of love, he tried to protect me. Mm-hmm. Out of love, anytime I needed money, he gave me money. So he never really taught me how to handle money. Never taught me how to handle anything, right? So I didn't he have kinda that. He kind of crippled you in a way. I don't want to say it like that, but, you know, you know, in a sense of the game I'm playing, yes. Mm. In business, it slowed me down a little bit. Because I actually envy, like, when Gary Vee talks, he's like, oh, bro, I used to sell lemonade when I was 12. I'm like, bro, when I was 12, I was, like, playing video games. Like, I didn't care about making money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, like, imagine I, when I was 12, if I was doing that, how much further I'd be right now. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you know, yeah, you could have, should have, would have. You know, mm-hmm. what am I going to do about it? But that's the number one thing he never, 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 never taught me. And I felt like building, building a business with him continued just to slow me down. It took about four months, but finally made the decision and was like, all right, you know what? I want to do something different. So uh started a podcast. Why? I'm going to say this publicly, and I don't mind it, just because, like, just hands up. My, a good friend of mine back then, uh, you know him, Omar. Mm-hmm. Passion If You started a podcast. I saw he was killing it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. This looks like a lot of fun. I want to try it out. Again, I've always tried things, right? And if I see someone else doing really good at it, and it's something that can relate to me, because I started to realize a lot of things he does, I was like, wait, I'm... I do You're that. already doing that. I'm very natural mm-hmm. with it. So I was like, let me do it. I've had multiple YouTube channels, but nothing really blew up. So let me try this. Started it. And, you know, through his mentorship and guidance and, you know, through the other, to a lot of other people that I, you know, got advice from, I always was, I take no credit for anything I'm doing right now. The only probably credit I could take is I wake up and do the work. But everything else, I just was like... What's the easiest way to gain this knowledge? I hit up the best of the best, Mm -hmm. which at the time when we started was Omar. Like, I'm going to give him a shout out to that. Mm -hmm. Like, he Mm -hmm. is good at Mm -hmm. what he does. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I saw that and I noticed it and I respect that. And I, you know, I reached out to him and told him what I'm up to and what I want to. And he was very nice enough to help me out and things like that. And so from his advice, from other mentors that I have around me, which we can talk about that a little bit, I really started to, you know, learn a lot really quick. Mm -hmm. And so... I started getting guests left and right. And well, wait, were, what was your approach on, on getting guests? Um, well, you know, the one, number one thing I was taught was, you know, I'm sure all of us know this. It's all considered consistency. So mm-hmm. it was just about numbers. It was a numbers game. In my head, I was thinking to myself, if I reached out to 200 people a day, eventually within a week, I'll have something. Somebody will and, respond. And the way networking really works is once you, to me, you got to build a core of five or 10 and whatever it is you're trying to get at. And then mm-hmm. eventually that'll just build on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, so networking is really not that hard, but it's just a matter of really just going at it and doing it. Uh, the way I messaged them, Omar taught me that. Shout out to him. He was really. He's <laughs> I'm really, sure we probably do the same thing because he taught me the same thing. Shout yeah. out Omar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he was again. As I said, I respect. He him breaks for, it down to make it so simple. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I I respect his methodologies, and so I used it, and it worked. Like you know, why would you not use something if it works? And so. Um, Obviously, now looking back, I've advanced way more in communication and like I'm doing things that are just beyond what I imagined Mm -hmm. I'd be doing in terms of relationship building and conversational starters and being able to communicate. And so now I have my own tactic of booking. But when I first started, Mm -hmm. um, it It, it was was helpful. It it gave Mm -hmm. me the boost. Mm -hmm. 100% give him all the credit for that. Um, So I got uh, a YouTuber on as my first official guest face to face. I will never forget this because speaking of, I love seeing this set up the very resourceful you, because yeah, I respect this a lot because I, when I got, I remember I didn't have anyone. I didn't have anyone on my team. I didn't have anything. I was like, I'm gonna start booking. So you started, did you have equipment? No. Did you have a space? No. Wow. I just started booking. I'm like, if I get a big, here's my concept. If I get a big enough guest, that's really cool. I can convince a media company to do it for free. <laughs> I'm sure with your manipulation. <laughs> oh, shut up. Don't tell me that. I'll call you out no, on it. No. Oh, my God. No, no, no. It's just like, it, it's just, no, no, no. I'm really real with business. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not, I never manipulate. Like, if I, I deliver. Like, when I say I deliver, I deliver, you know? So, it's never, whenever I tell you something, it's my word, period. I run with that. Um, I think that whole manipulation tactic is not necessarily manipulate. It's just the communication. Of course. I actually, I believe I'm a, 
you know, I'm a growing communicator and I'm that's part of one of my pros, mm -hmm. right? So I use that because I know and I understand humans and how they react. But yeah, you know, I just was just booking. I was like, I'm just going to book, 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 book. And I reached out to like 150 people for a good week and then finally got Josh Paylor Lynn. It's like, I think I half a billion views at that time mm -hmm, and like mm -hmm. a couple million subscribers. Uh, I thought it was dope because it's so funny because Josh, I used to watch his content when I was like, like five years ago. And so it was kind of cool. I was like, oh, you responded. Oh, good dope. And that's what I did. I start, And here's what I did. I remember this so clearly. I sat on, I was in my office. I don't know, somewhere. Mm -hmm. I just sat down somewhere and I put all my phone and I took a screenshot of Josh's account and I sent it to like 200 people. And I'm like, hey guys, I have an interview coming up with this guy. Do you, do you know anyone? Do you or do you know anyone who has an entire crew who would be willing to do this as a favor in oh, return shoot. for a favor? Like in return for the connection, you know? Like you can get some work out of it. Um... Bunch of people said no. Eventually, some person I knew from my college said, yeah, my cousin has a media company. I'm like, okay, hit him up. Called the guy. I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. Okay, cool. Sounds good. I show up to the first interview with like, a crew of 15 people, a drone, no like six way. cameras. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was, it was the craziest set I've had to this day because I realized I didn't need all this. But I but came, you had it. Yeah. Like Josh even told me, he's like, dude, how long have you been doing this for? <laughs> like, today? I'm like, yo, this is my first interview, buddy. He's like, he's like. He's like, what? I was like, I swear to God, they, I, I have a clip of him saying it. He was like, dude, you, this is like an entire like thing. So, uh, yeah, that's how I, from that, that's how the podcast got started. And then I started to realize that I have a thing for this. Huh. I like interviewing. As you can tell, we can probably have mm -hmm. a four hour conversation mm -hmm. and never get tired. I can do this forever. Like if there's one thing people tell me like, what would you want to do as your job? This. So uh, I was going to ask you that. So if all your expenses were paid for, yeah. you can do anything for free. This. What would it be? This, this. interviewing yeah, yeah, yeah. and just talking, Intervi interviewing, talking, being on stage, inspiring, giving back. The reason why I'm building a business, though, is I don't want to be full of fluff. Mm -hmm. I want to walk on stage and gain the respect of the masses for what I've done, period. Like, I want people to know that, OK, this guy is legit because mm -hmm. there's a lot of illegitimate people out there. Yeah, there is. And so that's why I create a lot of content, because I really, 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 really do enjoy it. I found a niche that I love. Like, there's no tomorrow. Like, I'm down to have a whole convo with you all day. I don't care. You know, so it's kind of like, OK, cool. So I started liking it and I started like interviewing like I, I it's so funny. We were talking. We're not necessarily the biggest podcast. You know why? Because we had too big of guests. The strategy of getting big guests was actually horrible for us because <laughs> I'm dead Looking serious. back. <laughs> well, in my opinion, in my head back then when I had no idea how marketing worked, I was like, uh, well, if I get big names, I'm sure it'll get views. Yeah, right? yeah. Nope, not at all. It got dug. Like, we probably, like, you're on the top 100 chart in an entrepreneur. We're yeah. not. That's I was crazy. looking at him yesterday. I'm like, bro, we're so focused on building the company that we forgot about the <laughs> podcast. What the hell? And you, he's, you, you know, it's funny, though, because we've only been, what, I think on our fifth month. Yeah. But I just up until last month on the 24th is when I started looking at the charts. Yeah. Never. I never looked at the numbers until I'm like, oh, I got an email. <laughs> what you what you don't realize is the aspect that the, I saw your guests mm -hmm. and things like that because you started slow and you grew mm -hmm. and you had some you do you, you, you mm -hmm. drizzled some big names, but not really. Mm -hmm. That actually worked in your favor. Mm hmm. Like if I were to go back and now consult, because I understand I've built podcasts. Mm -hmm, so like mm -hmm. I like it's not just for us. So like I've built a lot of big podcasts. Mm -hmm. We've helped set up a lot of podcasts. We've like now with the agency, I've done a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I understand how to grow it. I just haven't necessarily applied the tactics on mine yet because I have a different yeah. game that I'm playing yeah. for that. But um, but I was laughing. I was like, what the hell? Like this actually worked against us. But anyway, I started connecting with a lot of big names really quick, like people who you who I th who who you think like. Would take me like at least a year. I got in front of them in like 30 days, 60 days. It was like that. Um, and it wasn't overnight success because I'm not, I haven't even made a single penny off of the podcast. Mm -hmm. But it was just like whatever that was doing was working. I was really good at it though to begin with. Networking was just my thing, you know? And then so from there, eventually what started to happen is because I was building my brand, naturally people started to ask us for help. Mm hmm. Hey, do you guys do this for other people? I'm like, uh, well, I mean, a businessman <laughs> seeing an opportunity isn't going to say no. Yep. I was like, yeah. Uh-huh. Are you sure? Yeah, dude. I've been doing this forever. I've never done it. You know? Uh, so you we just took sat on, on your lap, huh? Yeah, I just sat on my lap because I was doing it. It was consistent. Like, this took eight months. Mm -hmm. This did not take one day. I was still working with my dad in these eight months while building the podcast. 
So whatever Gary tells you, oh, wait, well, go get a job. Like technically I look at my dad's company as like a job, right? Mm -hmm. Even though we started it together and we built it together, to me it was still like, okay, it's still a job, right? Um, so I I realized that and I was like, okay, cool. So I'm going to build this podcast, keep this income coming, help out my dad. And whenever I feel comfortable to dip, I'm going to just dip out. So we started getting projects. Hey, can you record this podcast for us? Can you do this video for us? Can you do this testimony for us? Uh, hey, man, do you know how to do marketing? Uh, can you build this funnel for us? Can you uh, can you mm -hmm. do that? I'm like, uh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Dude, I had no idea what I was doing. All I knew was the following. If I don't know how to fulfill the project, I can find someone that fulfills the project and Outsource I can take it. a cut. Uh -huh. yeah. And if it's even if it's like a dollar, it's still a cut. Cool. You know how they tell you companies don't profit the first couple mm -hmm. of years. So our company mm -hmm. hasn't even profited yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In terms of like, do we have, because every money I have right now, I'm just dumping it back into mm -hmm. the machine. Mm -hmm. But um, it was like really just that consistent back and forth. And so eventually eight months later was like, oh my God, okay, so this there's, there's something happening here. So I took the jump. I didn't take a single penny out of what I built with my dad. And I was just like, screw it. And at that time, it was a really hard decision because I thought I was building something with my dad. And so I spent two years building that just to know, just to feel like I was going to go and take 10 steps back. Mm. Now, looking back, it was all meant to be the way it worked out. But that's how Mogul came to life. We then eventually shifted it to what it is today, which is a we're a full service marketing, consulting and media firm. And basically what that means is we come into like bigger businesses and figure out whatever challenges they're facing in mm -hmm. marketing. And we partner up with them, become their trusted advisor in all ends of marketing. So even if we don't necessarily fulfill the project from our end, we have people in our network that are really good at what they do in every aspect. And we bring them onto projects. So uh, it gets so done. Regardless. It gets done. Yeah. So the idea is the following. I realized I'm really good at building relationships. I realize I'm really good at networking. I realize I'm really good at providing value. Can I just do that for businesses? Mm -hmm. So basically what I do is I reach out to C-level execs now, you know, and we, or, or VPs of, mm -hmm. you know, bigger mm -hmm. companies and we get to know them. And, you know, once we get to know them, we realize, okay, there's certain projects we can work on. And mm -hmm. we eventually start working on projects. And, you know, the idea is, let's just say, even if they ask me for like the simplest things, hey, can you do this for us? Yeah, sure, I got it. Even if it's not me, even if I don't make a single penny out of it, I'm still coming in. You clutch. at least nobody that you know somebody yeah. that's gonna do it for. Yeah, so I'm playing. I'm playing that. That's why I said a thousand strategic relationships because I'm building a business that's literally, 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 um, gassed by who you know mm -hmm. and who knows you. And so that's why this year I'm doing it's a another podcast form of currency. And, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. All right, Adam. So here at the Unbreakables. Yes. I'm not asking you. The deck is asking you. What is this? So you're going to choose two cards. Yeah. And read question by question. And answer the question. No. Okay. <laughs> Just two cards? Just two. Uh-huh. Just take these two. Perfect. So what does the first one say? How do you inspire others? Um, We're just talking about that now. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think the answer for this is simple. It's just lead by example. Um, and oh, lead by example and be very, very, very open to talk about your failures. Mm. Don't have an ego. Because at the end of the day, whatever you think society will think of you is actually not true. Like if you tell the world, guys, I'm failing, but I'm trying, it's so inspiring. To me, that's inspiring. Like just like mm -hmm. if some kid comes up to me and says, hey, man, look, man, I want to interview on my podcast. I just started. I, I, I suck at this. But I'm trying my best and I'm working on it. Okay. All right. All right. I got you. It's not that bad. <laughs> like, it's really not that bad. I got you. I respect it. You know, as long as you don't give up. But how to inspire others is really those two things. Um, lead by example and be very open to talk about your failures. And that's why we're here. We're here. Mm -hmm. Yep. So second one is what energized you today? This podcast. Awesome. man. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually pretty excited for this. I, I love doing podcasts. I'm always stoked to do them. I get really excited. Like, it's like a little kid getting candy. <laughs> like, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciate it. Awesome, man. No, I really, really appreciate you. So I need to ask you, what is next for you? And how do you intend to leave a legacy? Because we've talked about podcasts. We've talked about your media agency. Yeah. But what is next? Um, that's, uh, Shan, what do you think? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Drum roll, please. No, uh, no I, uh. I think what's next for us as a team really is, um, as I said, build like direct, direct next is like really building relationships around what we do to really kind of get to a point. My goal for this year is I want to get to anywhere from 35 to 50 people on the team mm -hmm. in terms of scalability for the company. 
um, I also we want to really kind of take the podcast thing to start it back up. So what's happened is the podcast took a step back because I have to build the business. Of course. Right. But it doesn't mean I don't do it. It's just necessarily, you know, in a startup, you got to kind of have to be resourceful mm-hmm. in your terms mm-hmm. of your time. Right. And so I think we've gotten to a point, thankfully, though, where we finally figured out and we can literally get another part, too, because there's so many things that I want to can talk about. But mm-hmm. finally figured out systems and how things work and things are actually starting to flow. And thankfully, it took us a while. But, you know, just how most businesses start, mm-hmm. it takes. I think we've gotten to a point where it's like stage two, stage two, which to me is let's scale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Stage one was you're running around like a chicken with a head cut off not knowing what to do. And mm-hmm. now you're comfortable enough. You're not necessarily like successful, but your systems are working. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now all you got to do is copy and paste. Rinse, repeat. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. where we're at right now. Rinse and repeating. And so now that we're rinsing and repeating, my media team will definitely start to grow. And once I come back, ooh, nobody can stop me because uh, we're going to be on fire. Uh, so that's, that's the funny part. I was like, that's why I don't trip. Like I may not be posting as much content as I, as I should be, but I just know that whatever we're doing in the background, when we come back, you, you nobody can stop mm-hmm, us. Like we mm-hmm. will be unstoppable. We will be creating more content than anyone's ever seen. And so I, I want to get to that level. So that's uh, this year. My goal is to get that fire started, mm-hmm. build that momentum, build that momentum. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, uh, get to the goals in terms of providing value to 35 to 50 families. I, I definitely want to be able to house, give people the opportunity mm-hmm, to grow. Mm-hmm. Because I think entrepreneurship is huge and I want to provide that culture in Mogul. Uh, We're working on it today to create a very exclusive growth oriented vibe. We spend thousands of dollars on training the people we work with. I mean, I've spent so much time together. We've spent so much time on Mm -hmm. like investing and turning to this thing to learn. And I want to continue to do that with everyone that works with us. So really creating that culture where people grow and feel like they're welcomed is our biggest of course our biggest thing at mogul um we want you to feel like a mogul like you're worth something you know what i'm saying because you are whatever game you're playing in your life even if you think it's small compared to what others are doing it's still meaningful because without you other things won't exist of course so those are like the top three for me really providing that value for those families providing value for the thousand people i'm going to meet and uh kind of gaining that momentum on all front ends so uh by the end of this year let's check back in a good year for, for me. a part two no <laughs> yeah i'm down i'm hella down i'm not even kidding uh for um a good year for me is gonna look like there's momentum going content's being posted daily on all channels um you know i'm interviewing people who are very mm-hmm, very mm-hmm. big in the space the caliber i'm gonna get into the podcast is ridiculous so like i'm not even like there's people in the social entrepreneur space that I don't even necessarily care to interview. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm more looking like people like Bill Gates to be on the podcast, mm-hmm, those kind of guys, because mm-hmm. I'm very interested in really, really dive into their mindset. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But those are the three biggest tactics for me. Like, I just really want to build my influence, want to build the people that I help and want to get started on that. Because once that I think the, this year is creating the base next year now, is, let's mm-hmm. go from 50 to scale it to 150 mm-hmm. and then from 150 to 500 and then from 500 to a thousand like that's kind of like way mm-hmm, i'm taking mm-hmm. it but just step by step i know my vision i know what i'm doing i'm just focused on the micro and making sure we we stay consistent so awesome oh. last piece of advice yep. your best advice for our audience for our viewers that are watching uh last piece of advice Ooh. If you're in a position now where you're watching this and you don't necessarily know what you want to do or you're in college and you're still trying to figure it out, whatever it may be, I would highly recommend building your influence Mm. and building who knows you. I was talking to Hisham on the way here. I've realized that the two biggest assets in business is who you know who you strategically know. So it's not just like, hey man, yeah, my best friend knows Barack Obama. Oh, that's cool. (laughs) Does this person know you on a name-to-name basis and think of you on a daily basis, Mm. right? Or not necessarily daily, maybe like every week you get brought up in their meetings or whatever Mm -hmm. it is, like, Mm -hmm. oh, Adam this, Adam that, oh, Kevin this, Kevin that. Do they know you like that? And for the people who don't know you that eventually can be strategic partners with you, do they know of you? So are you creating enough buzz in whatever it is you're doing that people are talking about what's up and coming. Those are the two things I would highly recommend focusing on before 
creating anything. Also, the third and final thing is knowledge, obviously. So invest in your knowledge. So those, those, those three things, if you are literally in a place in life where you have no idea where to start, that's where you start. Because that will naturally just get you to a position of figuring mm-hmm. things out and actually creating something that you never thought was possible. So... I love that, man. That's powerful. I'm going to list those three things on the on the links below. And if you can, tell our viewers how they can contact you. Yeah. Uh, all social media at Adam Tutunji. So I know a lot of people mess up the last mm-hmm. name. So it's T-O-T-O-U-N as Nancy, J as Jerry, I as an igloo. So it's Tutunji. Um, you can just follow me on all social media. I'm there on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever you want. The to whole nine. <laughs> the whole nine. But I'm very, very active on Instagram. That's like our biggest mm-hmm. focus. Uh, and LinkedIn. Awesome, awesome. And if you guys can, follow the Unbreakables podcast on all platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube iTunes. And again, thank you again. And I really, really appreciate your your time, the drive. And it's amazing connecting with you. This was fun. And we'll have a a part two, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, we have to. Because there's a lot of, that was like half of the, what I've learned so far. There's like, we can create like a whole series on things, Mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. on stuff like this. It'll be more like business oriented systems, like you said. But thank you again. We're out, guys. Thank you. Thank you.